Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel. I am an airline pilot on the Boeing 737. However, today I'm going to show you how to land in Skiertas on the NDB locator approach for Romway 01 using the Phoenix A320. So, let's start with the actual setup of the airplane. Most important thing, of course, is the MCDU. In here, it already demands me to enter the destination data as we're holding over Scopelos VOR. So, in our arrival page, we have inserted NDB approach from 01 and the approach via Sierra Kilo Papa. And let's quickly check over the route to make sure that it actually matches what we are supposed to fly. So, in here we have our chart. 16-1, effective 26th of March, locator approach Romney 01 at uh, Skiatos Airport. And that one is going from Scopilos VOR, over which we are holding at the moment, outbound on the radio 203. So let's see in here, we're going outbound on 203. Then we have the 3 mile point, until which we have to maintain 4000 feet, as you can see down here. So, that's the 3 mile point over here, and we should be at 4000. We actually have the constraint in. I don't know why the Phoenix is calculating with 100 feet less, but 4000 constraint is in at least. And then we are continuing on the radio 203 until 10 miles, that's the Juliet point, and we can descend altitude 2000 feet by there. So in here we have 203 to the Juliet point, and altitude of 2000 feet. From there we are going to start a right and turn to establish on the track 008 in mount to the final approach fix, which is Fox Quebec 01. So in here we see that we've got a course of 008 in mount to Fox Quebec 01. And if you check this on the display, you can see that we're actually going inbound on the track to the Fox Quebec 01. Leaving the Juliet point, we can descend 1600 feet, which is also the altitude we have to be at at the Fox Quebec point. So in here, Fox Quebec, 1600 feet is in. Thereafter, we are following a 3 degree descent angle, which we have in here. And in case of missed approach, climb on 008 degrees from the locator to 2500 feet. So in here we have our locator, then 008, 2500 feet. And then to the right, maximum 185 knots to the VOR, climb into 4000 feet and hold. So in here we're going to the VOR, 4000 feet, 185 restriction, and then we're going to join the hold. Alright, so that's our flight plan page checked. That leads us on to the radio navigation page. So we will definitely need Sierra Kilo Papa. So I'll put that into both radios. And we need an outbound course of 203. Which I'm going to insert over here. And from there on, we also need the Sierra Kilo Charlie NDB. So I'm going to put that into both ADFs. The reason I'm putting it into both ADFs is because that gives us a little bit of freedom with our selection up here. So we can go, for example, ADF1, VOR2, and the first officer could go, for example, VOR2, ADF1. From here on, we'll go to the progress page. We want to make sure we're in GPS primary here and we have a high navigational accuracy as we do plan to fly the whole approach using the FMC navigation and just use the raw data as a backup. Going on to the performance page, we have a rather short runway. Today we have a QNH of 1014. The temperature currently is uh, 25 degrees on the ground and the wind is calm. Let's see if it actually takes that. It does. All right, and the transition level is going to be at uh, 50. Minimums for this approach we get from the chart once again. That's 1600 feet. Which is going to be our barrel minimums. We want to do a flap full landing today because the runway is pretty short. Let's have a quick look at that to give you an overview of what the, of what the runway looks like. So over here you can see we have um, 1600 meters of runway available only. 
All right, so let's do some landing performance calculation then. We're going to arrival performance. We, want, we are going to Skiatos, runway 01. The runway is dry and we'll just take the latest meter over here. 101424 and the wind 3307. Okay, let me put that in real quick. Alright, our landing weight. Let's see what that's going to be. We're currently at 60.2. 3.8 estimated. So let's say we'll take 60 tons of landing weight here. That should cover our approach preparation as well. So now it's up to actually see that we can match our landing distances with the actual... Um, requirements so you can see that we just barely get in there using what do we have here medium auto brake if we go max manual then we're actually legal because we need that 1.15 factored um, distance in here so we'll have to do maximum manual braking on the landing anyway just to ensure a timely brake application I'm going to arm the auto brake into medium and then we'll have to apply maximum manual braking by the time that we get down. Final call here, looking at the fuel prediction. The alternate fuel is actually one ton. I don't know why the Phoenix doesn't load that automatically. Ah, oh, I do know, because I don't have an alternate selected. Sorry for that, guys. So we have plenty of extra fuel available in here. The secondary flap is a copy of the active. That's not really required. All right, that basically concludes our setup for this approach. Now, how are we going to fly it? Basically, what we are going to do is to use the uh, nav mode and the descent mode to track all the way outbound over here until we are turning towards the uh, final approach fix, and then we'll arm approach mode so that the Airbus is actually able to fly itself down. Now, what we can do as well over here, since the Fox Quebec is actually the point where the official procedure ends. We can always use the uh, track FPA mode together with the uh, autopilot and three degree guidance to get yourself down. But for today, we will want to use the ASSIS approach mode, as that just makes things a little bit easier and reduces workload a little bit. Okay, so. Quick words here. Why is this approach actually so special? Several points here. First of all, there is a saying that Skiatos is the Greek St. Martin. And the reason for that is that there is a beach just in front of the, of the runway and that people can actually um, go there for plane spotting. Then we do have an offset approach here, so you can see over here how the runway is pointing into a slightly different direction than we approach coming in on a track of 008 and if we have a look at our chart then we can see that the runway track is actually 015 so we will have to fly the final segment of the approach manually without automatic guidance available and after all it is visually a really stunning approach it really makes for a great lot of fun on uh, this arrival so, uh, let's actually go ahead then. We are currently turning back inbound to the uh, Scopelos VOR. Let's arm the exit from the holding. So now we are going to start the approach by the time we overfly the VOR the next time. In the meantime, quick look outside here. I gotta apologize for these guys down here for doing the holding to show you the setup for the approach. But this is the last time we will go to your village. I promise, guys. Really. Right, there's Seattle's over there. The room is located over here. The approach is going to take us out of the ocean here and then around and we'll come back like this.
finally, I know that some of you guys are asking why are you doing these videos with the Phoenix A320 rather than with the PMDG 737? And that's actually a very good question and one that is fairly easy to answer by looking at the navigational display. For the 737 we are still waiting for the new LNAV module to be implemented as of right now, that being Saturday the 18th of uh, June 2022. And the Phoenix is simply drawing this perfectly. And the Phoenix has the navigational capabilities to fly this at the moment. While in the 737 I wouldn't be 100% sure if it would be able to fly these things properly. Alright, anyway, we're getting off topic here, so let's actually get back to our aircraft and let's actually get back to what we're supposed to do. It definitely is time to read the approach checklist here so that we have capacities left later on. So, approach checklist. Ecom status checked. Approach type and runway. So we have NDB01. Minima. That's 1,600 feet. Approach phase. Yeah, we can activate it now so that we don't accelerate again. Thank you, Airbus. Okay, approach phase is active. And we are clear to an altitude, so Barraf1014. Approach checklist complete. So I'm going to set the altitude down to the 1600 feet for our final approach fix here. Put it into manage mode, so now it's going to alt constraint until we pass the Charlie point, which is the point from which we are going to start our descent. Here we go, overflying 3D me from Skopelos. And the aircraft is actually starting its descent here. It was a good idea to have a look at the runway as early as possible, and the runway is just over there beyond these hills. So we're going to fly in over the water over here and then the runway is just hidden behind it. Also some of you are wondering at which speed you should fly an approach like this and the answer to that is fairly simple. Don't go too fast but don't go too slow. So flying this at 250 knots would definitely not be appropriate, but having the aircraft in final configuration by now would be just as inappropriate. So I think maintaining the um, minimum clean speed here is a very good call to do. And then by the time we're turning final, we can start extending the flaps to the first notch and start configuring for our final approach. So, turning final, flaps one. Basically, my plan for this approach is to extend the gear 
by the time we're overflying the uh, Fox Quebec point. So I'll keep it on flaps one here on the S speed until maybe two miles prior to the uh, Fox Quebec. Then we'll extend flaps two so that the airplane starts slowing down. And then when overflying the Fox Quebec, we'll take gear down and extend our landing flaps. So, keep in mind, even though the navigation mode applies, we have to cross-check with the raw data, so we can see our NDB needle up here, indicating something 007, 008, so that's all within the limits we are looking for. On the approach mode, final approach above. is engaged, so, and we're passing two miles, flaps two, now we start losing our speed, slowing down, Uh, Rommel is just up there. Minimum. Ah, continue. Alright. Gear down. Flap 3. And flaps full. Right, we are starting our descent, so we can set the missed approach altitude of 4,000 feet. Yeah, minimum continue, we've had that part already. And read our landing checklist. Auto brake, medium, but as set, we'll do max manual. Missed approach altitude, 4,000 feet set. And ECAM memo, landing no blue. That's the landing checklist complete. So, a good point to disconnect the autopilot and start establishing yourself on the runway track is once we've passed this island here so that we don't overfly it. Just for um, keeping the noise levels down in the area. So, One here time. we go. Autopilot off. Auto throttle off. We'll also put the flight directors off. And from now on it's basically visually maneuvering towards the final. But the vertical deviation guidance you see here on the primary flight display should remain usable. So overall we should get um, good guidance from the aircraft system there in terms of the vertical path. And for the horizontal path we simply have to look out and steer the airplane manually. 500. So here you can see why it's called the uh, Greek St. Martin. At the beach right in front of the runway. Some boats down there as well. One hundred. Fifty, forty, thirty, twenty. Retard. Speed brake up, thrust as normal, manual brakes. And we can go off the brakes now. You can see the thing is decelerating quite a bit better than it's supposed to. Or, sorry, when it's supposed to in this relation doesn't mean um, than the real one would, but it simply means that it is decelerating uh, quite a bit better than what the onboard performance tool calculates and that is actually something that is expected. The performance calculators are usually always a little bit conservative. Right, small apron as you can see, but for our tutorial we are going to keep it at this. We'll bring the aircraft beyond the line and then we'll finish over here. I hope you found this useful. If you have any suggestions on what to improve or if you think that I have talked total bullshit, please let me know in the comments below. And I would appreciate a comment, maybe a like or a subscription to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Thank you very much for joining and I'm wishing you all a great weekend.